Beloved children of God, I am challenged by today's scripture. You know, I kind of wanted to just pray that this sermon doesn't turn out the way Jesus' did in the scripture that Darren just read. I mean, it didn't go so well for him, did it? Jesus goes to teach in the synagogue in his hometown, and at first, the people are like, this dude is giving us some wisdom. And all of a sudden, they start to realize who he is. These people know his backstory, and they know the parts of him that don't fit into societal norms. The carpenter is trying to teach in the synagogue? This blue-collar worker? What business does he have here? Oh, he's Mary's son. Normally, people would be identified by their father, so I can only imagine that this is like them saying, here is the bastard son of Mary trying to teach us in the synagogue. He's the firstborn son of Mary, and with these siblings, yet he left his family to go out into the world. How irresponsible. Now, I may be putting words in the mouths of the unnamed people in the scripture that are talking about Jesus, but think about it, my good church folk. Which would you be like in the church? Bastard, or isn't that Mary's son? This is upsetting, though, isn't it? Jesus is being rejected in his hometown, not based on what he has to say, but because he has the wisdom and the power, as it first said in the scripture, but because of who he is. And Jesus has a little comeback, a little comeback. Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, among their own kin, in their own house. That seems very human of Jesus to me. I can absolutely see myself saying something like that. Not really a great comeback, but stating the truth, as we've seen this statement to be true with other prophets before Jesus, and these Jews would have known about that. But Jesus was probably getting a little defensive and feeling hurt. I want to acknowledge that the word queer has been used as a pejorative term for gay and I know it probably makes some of you uncomfortable. The word queer is being reclaimed, though, and is now known to mean someone whose gender expression or sexual orientation is outside of the societal norms, and it's not a derogatory term. The more that I read today's scripture and was challenged by it, the more I realized how relatable it is. How many of you have ever felt like you didn't fit in? especially within your own hometown, within your own family. That's why having a place like this is so important. Look at all of us. Each one of us is a whole lot different than the other people in the sanctuary. We definitely don't fit in everywhere, and we're absolutely a unique church where our norms aren't based on sexual orientation or gender expression, or race, or class, or physical ability, or the type of music we like to have in worship, but are based on love. We are a place that is outside the norms of society here at Middle, and today, I'd like for you to think about that and to embrace it. So, queerly beloved, we are gathered here today to share with one another an important moment in each one of our lives. It's a time when we recognize how far we have come together. Consider the Stonewall Riots, June 28, 1969. The LGBT patrons of the bar fought back against a raid, and that moment is often credited as the spark that ignited the gay rights movement. Over the following weeks, members of the community quickly organized into activist groups, fighting to establish places where the LGBT community could be open about their sexual orientation without fear of being arrested. Just a week and a half ago, on June 24, 2015, the Stonewall Inn was granted landmark status. Yes. And Remember a few years ago when marriage equality was passed in New York State on June 24, 2011? There was a rally that evening at the Stonewall Inn to celebrate. And this year, 
on June 26, 2015, the Supreme Court ruled that same-sex couples have the right to marry no matter what state they live in, and all couples who are already married, marriages will be recognized across the nation. And again, people rallied outside the Stonewall Inn. During Pride Month, June, we partnered with our extended family, the Collegiate Churches of New York, and worked through challenges and areas where we may have wanted to reject each other for being different, but instead created entertaining events, beautiful worship celebrations, spaces to talk about theology with one another, and marched, sang, and danced down Fifth Avenue all together in our Love Period t-shirts. Our own gospel choir provided our soundtrack as we participated in the annual Heritage of Pride March just last Sunday. In our time together, I pray we, as a community and as a world, can love each other and grow and blossom so that we may decide to live out the rest of our lives as one body. The Heritage of Pride March theme this year was complete the dream. It's amazing that during the march, I ran over to the barricades to kiss my girlfriend and received cheers from the people gathered around us. We have come a long way over the years, and with national marriage equality, it might feel like we can sit back and relax now, but there is still marching to be done. There are religious exemption laws popping up all over our country. There are still people being rejected, discriminated against, beaten, jailed, and even killed all over the world because of their sexual orientation or gender expression. It's overwhelming and it's heartbreaking and sometimes feels hopeless. But we must keep marching. And we must march not only for the rights of the LGBTQ people, but for all people. In the second half of today's scripture, Jesus sent out the disciples two by two. The sending out of the disciples is the most important part of the scripture for me. And Jesus told them that if they're ever rejected, to shake the dust off their feet as a testimony against those who rejected them. He's actually preparing them for the rejection, which will happen. Jesus is saying, this is what discipleship looks like. We will be faced with failures as well as success, and we should not give up. Jesus has just experienced rejection himself when he says this to the disciples. And Jesus lived outside of the cultural norms. He knows what it's like. So God knows what it's like. This means we are each free to bring our entire story as a human, with our hurts and our rejections, with our unique differences, with our failures and our successes and our celebrations before God. We should always feel able to share our whole selves. We were created in God's own image, fearfully and wonderfully made. God created me to be who I am in this world. And sometimes I'm rejected too. You might notice that my mother is not here today. Every time that I've ever preached here at Middle before today, she's been here. But she does feel some shame because of my sexuality. Do I feel defensive and hurt? Yes but I know that our relationship is a work in progress. And I also know that God is with me in my rejection and that I do not need to feel shame over who I have been created to be, queerly beloved. So I shake the dust off and keep going. And God created you to be exactly and wholly who you are. What greater love than that? It's God's promise to us. You are uniquely beloved by God. Imagine God saying to you, I, God, take each one of you to be my beloved, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, 
for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish from this, way, this day forward until you breathe your last breath. And even then, I will continue loving you. And remember that it is our call to be disciples and go out to be God's ambassadors in the world. People don't want to be judged, but they do want to be loved. So let us always work toward growing, toward reconciling, toward loving. And now a pledge for us, adopted from one of our collegiate partners, Believe Out Loud, as a sign of our love of God and our love of our uniquely beloved neighbors. Please repeat after me if you're comfortable. As an LGBTQ person of faith or ally, as an LGBTQ person of faith or ally, I know our work toward justice for the LGBT community. I know our work toward justice for the LGBTQ community does not end with nationwide marriage equality. Does not end with nationwide marriage equality. I pledge to use my voice as an advocate. I pledge to use my voice as an advocate to end violence and discrimination, to end violence and discrimination against LGBTQ people, against LGBTQ people. I pledge to continue my own journey. I pledge to continue my own journey to grow beyond simply accepting what I understand, to grow beyond simply accepting what I understand, to affirming LGBTQ people as they are, to affirming LGBTQ people as they are. Most of all, most of all, I pledge to honor the expansive love of God. I pledge to honor the expansive love of God. Standing in solidarity, standing in solidarity with all members of the LGBTQ community, with all members of the LGBTQ community, as we work together as we work together to achieve justice for all, to achieve justice for all. May we always remember God's promise to us as we continue to shake the dust off and keep moving forward toward a world full of God's expansive love. Amen.